Welcome to the next video in the Command Line Basic series. In this video we're going to be looking at file compression and archiving. Specifically we'll be looking at the zip, gzip, and tar commands um, for various ways to squish your files up and mush them together. So we're going to start off here um, and I've created a copy of my stuff folder and called zip. So I'm going to go into this folder so we can play around uh, without destroying uh, the stuff on my machine. Um, and so you can see we just have a whole bunch of files in here and I'm just going to play around with these. Um, now if I do an ls-al um, to get that more detailed listing that I want to have, um, you can see not only the files that we have um, and the fact that we have a directory in here, but we can also see file sizes. And uh, we'll be looking at that as we go through this lesson. Many people are familiar with uh, zip format, and uh, that's the first thing that we're going to be looking at uh, today. Uh, and uh, this is common; was common on Windows machines, and uh, it's now common on most modern uh, Nix systems as well that you can use zip. So we're going to just use the zip command, and then uh, the first thing we need to put after the zip command, the first argument here, is we need to put the name of the new zip file that we want to create. Um, so once I zip something up, um, it's going to be named formalter.zip. And then this is the file, formalterchat.txt is the one I want to do. And you can tell right there, it told me how much it actually deflated, squished things down. So if I do another ls-al now, you'll see I have, here's my original file, and uh, the zip file is right above it, and you can see the difference in file size there. So it wasn't a big file to begin with, but it was text, and those compress really well. Um, and so you can see we cut it you know, down to less than, than half. Um, that's simple to create a zip. Um, now, to undo that and to get the file back out again, all you need to do is unzip it. So I will unzip the file I just created. Now, it's asking me, do I want to replace it? Because when it unzips it, it's saying, hey, you already have a file with that name. You can choose what you want to do. It gives you some options, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and replace it, because that's fine. It's the same file. Inflates it, done. And it replaced the file for me. And now when we list, you can see the zip file still exists, and the, the text file is there. Um, so. Uh, an important thing to remember is that it didn't destroy my zip file. The zip file is still there, and it extracted the, the file that was in there as, as well. So, very handy. The other really popular um, compression uh, that you can do on a Nix system uses the gzip command. So that stands for GNU zip, which would be the free and open source version of uh, zip. And uh, so, uh, on older systems that don't have zip for some reason, you, would, you can always use gzip. Now, when you use gzip, the only thing I'm putting after that is the file. I'm not giving it another f a destination file name or anything like that. I'm just saying I want you to zip up this file. Um, and gzip is just going to go ahead and crunch it up for me. Um, so that's it. I didn't get any feedback. And um, whoops, I can't type L's. Um, now when I go to do my ls-al, um, now you can see here it actually replaced my text file with the gzipped version. So I don't have just the plain text file anymore, um, like I did when I did the zip. Um, but you can also see the file size here. It's even smaller than the zip. Um, so it's uh, even a little bit better compression that happened there as well. But it just took the file, replaced the file, and appended gz. Now to undo it, surprisingly, you're going to use gunzip. So I'm going to do the same thing, uh, gunzip put the file name that I want to open up and go ahead and run that. And now that we have that, when I do my ls, uh, we can see that um, I have the, the .txt file again, and notice that the gz file is gone. So when you use gunzip, it actually replaces the file, whereas when you use zip, it sort of creates a separate thing um, and, and, and keeps them separated and retains them as you go. So just something to really keep in mind, um, that you're sort of overwriting it and replacing things when you use gzip. The next thing we're going to look at is archiving. And we're going to look at the tar command, um, which creates tar balls, you may have heard of. Um, and uh, pretty much what this is going to do, instead of actually squishing the file size, it just takes a bunch of files and puts them together into one for you. Um, and so tar is the command, 
and then you uh, after that you put a series of letters to indicate what the tar command is supposed to do. Now I started off with a dash. You don't have to do that on um, modern systems. It, it, old school way was to put the dash, so I just still do it, but you don't need to anymore normally. C is for create. V is for verbose to give us some feedback to the screen, and then F is file, saying I want to make a file here. And then this is my file name that I want to create. I want to. I'm going to make something called form stuff. Dot tar uh, for the extension there. And then what do I want to put in there? And I'm just going to put anything that begins with the word form. This is just a simple way for me to do rather than listing out all the different files. So I'm just doing a form and then an asterisk. Now that verbose gives me that list, so it sh actually shows me what it got. That's that's what that V did for me, is it actually made it print this list to the screen so I could see what it was really doing, um, which is handy. So now if we go ahead and do an LS, we can see that um, I now have this uh, new file form stuff tar. Uh, didn't do anything to the actual files. Um, it just created a new file which happens to contain all of those other three in one. So now what we want to do is uh, extract that, get that stuff out, and instead of untar, we're just going to use tar again. There's no un part. And this time I'm going to do xvf rather than c, x for extract rather than c for create, and then put my file name. Um, I still put the V for verbose, so you can it'll show me which files it's extracted. So that's awesome. Um, and now I'll do an ls, and uh, you'll see. So the the tar file still exists. So doing a tar extract doesn't destroy the tar file; keeps it there. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that these files uh, actually got overwritten. It didn't warn me, didn't ask me like I did when I did zip. It just overwrote those files when it when it extracted really important thing to keep in mind. Very, very handy. Um, uh, sometimes when you just want to replace a whole bunch of stuff, um, but uh, you just need to keep that in mind so that you don't accidentally overwrite files that you didn't intend to. Now the other thing I want to show here uh, to kind of wrap things up is that you can also do compression and archiving at the same time by adding a Z into the command. So you can see I have C, V for verbose, Z for zipped, and then F for file, and the Z for zip is not using zip command, it's actually using the gzip command. So it uses Z, but it's using gzip, keep that straight. Um, and again, uh, what I'll do is just put in the name, but this time for the extension I'm going to do um, tar.gz. The short form of this though is to just do tgz, um, and this is the most common uh, extension that you'll see for what we call tarballs. Um, uh, it, either of those extensions will work and tar will recognize it when it goes to extract. Same thing, I'm going to put them all in here. Uh, you notice it actually included the uh, the tar file that I had created previously and stuff like that, so this one has even more stuff, a duplicate of it, but you know, anyway. Um, so I've gone ahead and created this and now, so this is actually a uh, compressed archive rather than just a plain archive like it was before. If I do this ls-al, we look at the file sizes. Um, if you look at the, uh, so I have form stuff tar, uh, which was not compressed, and then I have the tgz. Now the uh, the tar ball is, is bigger in size if you actually look at the numbers, um, but keep in mind that the, that the that the compressed one also has a full copy of the other, so it actually is a duplicate. Um, so it would have been, you know, twice the size, um, and it still got compressed down. So, right, so you can see you have this plus the actual other file, so you multiply that by two, and that would be the actual file size. And then when it got compressed, it actually got squished down from 16 to 13. So, anyway, um, there's the, the compressed tarball, and again, when we come to extracting, we just use tar, we use x for extraction rather than c. Um, put the z in there again so it knows that it needs to uncompress as well as extract, and the verbose gives me my list. We'll do a little ls-al, and again, it didn't destroy my tarball, but it did overwrite all of those files for me. So, just keep that in mind. 
Real quickly to wrap up, I just want to point out uh, from way back at the very first lesson, you can do a man on uh, tar um, and see all of the interesting stuff that you can do. Um, you can see there are lots of options here. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Um, but uh, you, they have some examples, and so you can always sort of jog your memory by just popping open man and looking at the examples and reading through to see what's going on. So that's it for archiving and compression, and I'll see you next time for Command Line Basics. Do you